I'm still in Cape Town. We are still on lockdown. I think it's like day 55 of lockdown. And during lockdown, we're only allowed to leave our houses from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. to go exercise. And so today, I've gone for a walk. And when I go for a walk, I always end up here, overlooking these impressive mountains. And this is Table Mountain. That is Lion's Head. And both are staples of the Cape Town landscape. And both are extremely old, which got me thinking. Okay, these mountains are old, which is cool, but what are the oldest mountains? Where are they? And then, what's their story? What are rocks? We are learning about rocks in this video. Okay, all right. I have a bit of a story time before we jump into this video. I was cutting my own hair because of, well, quarantine. And as you can tell, the result is a nice big bald spot. I didn't realize what size head trimmer I had on and just went right for it and zzz, gave myself a nice little whoops on the side of my head. But anyways, um, as you know, I am stuck here in Cape Town. And because of this, I have developed what someone call a minor obsession with South Africa. And so when I Googled oldest mountains on earth, you can imagine my delight when I discovered they're in South Africa. Yeah. What are the odds? They're right, they are right here. Which is perfect because it plays right into my obsession. And this area in the upper northeast of South Africa is home to the Barberton Greenstone Belt. And they are officially some, if not the oldest mountains on earth. In this video, we're going to be talking about rocks that are hundreds of millions of years old which is an amount of time that is quite frankly, kind of hard to comprehend and wrap your head around. So let's give some context, starting by comparing mountains. Here are the Andes in South America. They are 45 million years old. Here are the Himalayas in Asia, 50 million years old. The Alps in Europe, 65 million years old. And the Rockies in the US, 80 million years old. The Barberton Greenstone Belt, the ones we are talking about, they are 3.5 billion years old. Billion, with a B. Which is an unfathomable amount of time. And they were created in what is called the Archean period. And Archean comes from the Greek word meaning beginning. And that's a very accurate description because these rocks were probably some of the first above water pieces of land on the planet. Now, looking at these mountains today, you probably wouldn't think, Oh, look at those obviously super old rocks over there. In fact, overall, I'd say they look like your average mountains. And that's what everyone else thought until these guys showed up and found gold. In 1884, the brothers Henry and Fred Barber, along with their cousin Graham, struck it rich, leading to South Africa's first gold rush, resulting in a town being formed called Barberton, very original, and a mine being built and the eventual realization that in addition to the actual gold, they'd also struck something of a historical gold mine as well. But before we go into why these mountains are important, and they are very important, let's take a step back and talk about the geology and how these mountains were formed. Because, well, I think it's interesting. So as I started to research this place and how it was formed, I quickly realized I know nothing about geology. I was reading through research papers with words like supracrustal and lithostratigraphic and comatites and convective overturn, dome and keel structures, tectonic amalgamation. I needed to talk to a geologist. My name is David Morant. Uh, I'm a geologist and I spent 15 years in Barberton studying the geology and working in the area. David was awesome. And he explained that there are two theories about how this area was formed. There's the traditional theory, and then there's an alternative theory. We're gonna go with the more traditional theory because it's a bit more widely accepted. So the Barberton Greenstone Belt was created like many mountains are created. We have two pieces of Earth's crust collide together. And this slow but intense collision causes one side to slide under the other in what is known as subduction. 
and the subduction causes an immense amount of heat. This creates lava, which rises and slowly pushes the land up and up and up. And over a long period of time, voila, it creates mountains. And that's how it's believed this area was formed. And so ends your oversimplified geology lesson. This is a piece of marble I was given by an old man on an island in Greece. And it's the same marble that was used to create some of the most famous statues in all of Greek history. Apparently it's like a special type. And as a kid, I had a rock collection full of rocks just like this. I had tiger's eye and pyrite, geodes, turquoise, all kinds of cool rocks. So it feels kind of like a coming to my roots or coming back to my roots making a video about rocks. So we talked about these mountains and how they were formed, how they were discovered, and that they're old, but why are these rocks important? Why are they more important than say, other rocks? These mountains are important to geologists because they are a 3.5 billion year old time capsule. And they are a fluke. They should not exist. The way mountains work is that once they are formed, the elements immediately begin to wear away at them. The wind, the water, the environment slowly chips away and erodes them until they are gone. And over millions of years, the Earth's terrain is constantly going through this process of building up and tearing down, and building up and tearing down. It's what's known as the Wilson Cycle. Even Table Mountain here is eroding away, slowly, pebble by pebble. Give it a few hundred million years and It'll look just like that beach, all sand. But for some reason, the Barberton Greenstone Belt has withstood 3.5 billion years of erosion. And it's still here, which makes it a crazy anomaly. And so I asked my geologist friend, David, how'd this happen? It's just pure luck, nothing else. For some reason, and there's just no explanation, it just happened. So somehow, these mountains have miraculously survived. And the result is they are this window into the very building blocks of this planet. When this planet was formed, it didn't have an oxygen atmosphere like we have now. Life pretty much didn't exist until these small bacteria called biomats appeared. And they were the first organisms to take the sun's energy and turn it into oxygen, AKA photosynthesis, which allowed life as we know it, you and me to exist. And we know all of this because you can find these organisms fossilized in the rocks at Barberton. And you can touch them. You can put your hands on the very building blocks of life, which is freaking cool. The layers of these rocks also show us that the lunar cycle used to be 20 days compared to the 28 day cycle we have now, which means that our moon used to be closer to the earth. And that gives scientists insight into how moons and planets behave and form. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff that these rocks can tell us, most of which is a bit too technical and in the weeds for a video like this, but basically allows geologists, planetary scientists, academics to answer questions that without these rocks, we just would only be able to guess at. Making these simple rocks really unique and important. The age, the degree of preservation, and of course the accessibility make that's what really makes the barbton mountain land unique and i use that word advisedly only one i don't use unique uh, in any other way and that is where i'm gonna end it guys right here on a beach surrounded by sand which as you know is the result of millions of years of erosion so it seems fitting to end it here um when we look back at this whole thing this whole pandemic it'll hopefully just be a small blip in geological terms, a small thin layer. It will hopefully be a lot of layers of our life. And in doing the research for this video, that was a kind of a comforting thought. So hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully you've enjoyed learning about the oldest mountains on earth and that rocks are freaking cool. And if you have, leave a comment, subscribe, like, because a lot of work goes into these videos, doing all the research, talking to experts, animating everything. And if you guys left a comment and you liked and you subscribed, that would mean a lot to me. Um, and that's when I end it. So the show's over, vlog's done. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. And uh, my, my wife's over on the other side of the room here laughing. Um, the, uh, yeah, it's, geology's been a passion in my life 
since I first found a fossil, I was nine years old in England and I found a fossil. And somebody, an old man in the village in where I lived, explained what it was. And I never wanted to be anything else other than a geologist. <laughs> okay, don't forget right. me started off. 